Hi, hello, how are you doing? I'm uh, I'm just going a bit mad. Uh, here's the wee little toddler. Say hello, wee little toddler. Hey, she's eating a bit bit of uh, citrus. It's like a kumquat or something or another. Anyway, the point is, I'm bored and let's talk about math. First off, who stole the toilet paper and why did you do it? But seriously, why is the toilet paper not in the stores and why is it taking so long for it all to get there? Well, so I was thinking about it and it's actually a pretty simple math problem. So let's talk about it. Well, so you need three key players to understand it. Uh, it looks something like this. Can you see this? We got uh, manufacturers. Those are the ones that actually make the toilet paper. You have your stores over here. Those are the ones where, you know, you buy it from. And then uh, you got uh, you guys, the consumers, who, uh, well, you use the toilet paper. You consume it. Anyway, so this is really a problem with supply and demand. And really, what happens when an emergency jacks up the demand? Well, let's talk about it. Don't eat butter packets, you crazy baby. Oh, it's grape jam packet. She's got a good taste. That's a spritzer. Leave that alone. See, she's getting into all sorts of stuff. Okay. Not blessed. Anyway, so let's play it this way. Normally, when you have a supply and demand curve, uh, it's fairly steady, or it reaches something, when you pay attention to it, it's at an equilibrium. It's like... Uh, people stock up and sell based on how much they think they have. Well, so normally we have th three links in our supply chain. You have people, you have the supply, the producers, they make the toilet paper. You have the stores, they sell you the toilet paper. And then you have the consumers and you use the toilet paper. So it's got three little bits to it. It goes from manufacturers in the top to stores to you guys flushing it down the commode all right now normally let's say your store it supplies about i don't know maybe a thousand people thousand customers regularly but let's say on average it sells about a uh, hundred packs a week it sells a hundred packs of toilet paper every week not to everybody, because again, not all thousands of its customers are going to go in there at the same time and buy toilet paper, are they? No. But on average, you know, they go, they filter in, you go once a month or so, or maybe more if you've... Uh... Anyway, none of my business. You go in however, you know, however often you need, and on average, this store, for this example, sells about 100 packs of toilet paper. Well, so they need 100 packs of toilet paper a week, right? So they talk to the producers. And the producers, well, they truck them, they send them a truck, they sell them a truck's worth of toilet paper, they send them 100 packs a week because that's how much they use. So uh, they truck them, they send them 100 packs per week. And now the, the manufacturers, they have like warehouses also. So like, be aware, they got tons, tons of TP just hanging out so here's how it goes manufacturers they have a lot of toilet paper they send about a hundred to your store because your store sells about a hundred packs per week and then you consume it now that's normal now then you have things like emergencies okay now most emergencies are mild so like a snow day or inclement weather, or like the tornadoes that, well, I said tornadoes aren't really mild, or mild either, are they? Uh, but you have typical emergencies like uh, bad weather, right? Those are typically mild and short term. They don't last very long. It's like an initial little rush and it's okay. So here's why we, why it's important to consider that. Normally, like I said, you have a regular supply and demand curve. Okay. So it looks something like this over here, right? That's your supply and demand curve. Your demand means fixed around about a hundred packs of toilet paper per week. But let's say that snow day happens and every mother panics. Well, so that bumps up the demand briefly maybe to like 
150 packs that week instead of just a normal 100. Well, your store, being smart, they have a back of house. And so maybe they've saved 50 extra packs just in case. They've had snow days before. They know how the self handles. And we all panic and it's just the way it goes. We know that. So I've written it in black over here. They've saved 50 packs a week. There they have like 50 packs stored up actually in addition to what they normally buy. So they normally sell 100 in store at any given time though they could have up to 150 packs of toilet paper because who knows? Who knows? And it's Tennessee. We could have a snow day here. Who knows? Anyway. However, what we're currently facing is no mild emergency. Uh, so dire emergencies? Like uh, pandemics? Or floods? Or like something that doesn't get fixed in like a couple of days? The problem is that it doesn't just raise the demand to say like 150 packs of toilet paper, it raises the demand for some silly reason that every Joe Schmo and every Karen who goes to your store wants 300 packs of paper each. Well, it jacks the demand way up here to like 300 packs of toilet paper. Well, remember, your store at any given time only has like 150. Well, that's not too bad, right? So that's like, uh, you know, we only need, you know, maybe like an extra 150. That's not such a big deal, you say. You need 150 more. That's an easy thing to say. 150 more. Not a big deal at all. Um, except, uh, people still use toilet paper on a regular basis. Which means, yeah, this week, when the rush happened, every store, and this isn't just one store, it's all across the country, the stores needed an extra 150 packs of toilet paper right then and there. But, all the people, all the non-Karens, who didn't rush to the store still use toilet paper and still need to re-up their supply. Uh, so, in addition to needing an extra 150, they still need the 100 that they would normally sell. Which means they need 150 more plus 100 more every week. Now, remember, the producers, the manufacturers, have t gobs of toilet paper, so we know it's there. Why isn't it making it to the stores? Well, they supply dozens and dozens, thousands even of stores. And they've gotten used to the way that their supply lines work. So let's say the truck that comes to your store can only, it supplies several stores. It can't just jack up all the toilet paper for just your store. It has to supply a bunch of stores. So it can only carry so much extra toilet paper. And maybe the manufacturer has a shortage of drivers. They can't send multiple trucks. They just not, don't have the drivers. And so let's say in this emergency situation, instead of your store only getting 100 packs per week from the manufacturer, maybe they can increase the amount they buy. Maybe they, buy 100 and, maybe they can only get 125 extra per week instead of the normal 100. So I've crossed that out. I've got 125 now. So now the store is getting 125. Again though, we have a shortage of 150 plus 100 every week. So how does needing 150 and 100 more every week compare to getting 125 per week? That's where we're at. We need 150 and 100 more every week. We're only getting 125 a week. So you can see here, we are going to decrease the shortage, but it's gonna take time for things to level out. We could solve that math problem using a system of equations, actually. If you subtract from what you need, based on what you're getting supplied, uh, you realize that you're cutting down on the shortage by about 25 a week. Now uh, that still means 150, that's still six weeks to cover that shortage. So you can still see, that's probably why we still have very few amounts of toilet paper in the stores. So, anyway, do with this what you will, but I thought we'd have a little logistics problem. There's a little bit of math for your day. Bye.